Okay, so picture it. You were born in the early 80s. Video games are all the rage. And then in the middle of the decade, a legend is born. But not just any legend, the legend, Zelda. I wonder if people knew that Zelda would become an iconic game. One that even if you didn't like video games, you would like Zelda. I remember being in high school and a lot of the kids I hung out with played Zelda. Unfortunately, I missed the craze. We didn't have a Nintendo and I was generally uninterested in video games at the time. So as my friends got to experience the adventure, I studied for exams and remained uninteresting. So fast forward now to the year 2020. For most people, this was an absolute dumpster fire. However, for myself, it played out a bit differently. I had a career change, a few personal epiphanies, and of course I met my wonderful boyfriend. So he's a little bit of a gamer. <laughs> okay, so he's a lot of a gamer. I made the mistake of telling him I had never played Zelda while we were at the comic book store, and I definitely thought he was going to drive away and leave me there. I was able to get in that I knew the difference between Link and Zelda, and I knew a little bit about the games. I mean, my friends did play them after all. So we made a deal that I would play the Zelda games, but because I was such a novice, I did need to play some other games first. But here we are, one year later, and I have a handful of games under my belt, and we finally began my adventure with Link and The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. <laughs> Now, I was excited to play the game, however, I was extremely nervous. Keep in mind, this has been building for the past year, and the time has finally come. Currently, I'm recording this as I'm about halfway through the game. Okay, so I'm not going to sugarcoat anything here. I enjoy the game very much, more than I thought I could, but I do have my fair share of issues at the moment, but we'll get to that. Starting off, I think that the little avatars are adorable. It wasn't what I was expecting to see, but I have learned that this game was remade from a handheld game into a game for the Switch. They look like little clay dolls, almost a CG animated version of Claymation. As far as CG goes, I think this one is aged better than some of the other games that I've experienced with the style. So I enjoy the aesthetic of the game. One thing that surprised me so far was the music. Listening to it out of context of the game, it isn't my favorite. Compared to the soundtracks of Trials of Mana, Octopath Traveler, Super Mario Galaxy, and even other Zelda games like Skyward Sword, I just don't think it held up to the task of being engaging enough of a soundtrack to captivate me for more than a few moments that it was on. It felt like background noise. However, hearing it in the game, it was a completely different experience. I enjoyed the music and the context of the game. I think that it pulls together the story of Link trying to leave the island and all of the different areas of the map really well. So I may need to listen to the soundtrack again after I finish the game with some new appreciation. The controls are a lot different than the games that I've been playing. It is on the Switch, so I do have the option for the Joy-Cons. However, I use the traditional controller. The controller is getting easier to use because I've played a few games on the Switch now and I can handle the controller fairly well. It doesn't use camera controls, so I don't even have to worry about constantly shifting the camera, even though there have been a few times where I tried to move the camera absentmindedly before I remembered that I can't. I really like the top-down experience. It is different from all of the other games I've played in depth so far, and I really enjoy the experience. But one thing about the game controls that isn't necessarily a nuisance, but rather just a little annoying at first, is you can only have two item slots at a time. So right now, I have the bombs, a bow and arrows, magic powder, a shovel, and the ability to jump, but I can only use two at a time. This isn't a deal breaker for me, but not having to do this before, it felt a little odd at first. As for the gameplay, I think this is where I have the most frustration. And oddly enough, it has little to do with the actual game. I have absolutely terrible depth perception. So when I'm engaging in battle, I never really know how close I'm supposed to stand to hit the target. Oftentimes, I'm too close, take a ton of damage, and never even hit the enemy. So trying to figure out how close I need to be is near excruciating for anyone trying to watch me play. Sorry, Ren. This is one reason I don't play in the playthroughs. So far as Dungeon 3, my death count is well over 50. Yes, that is a nifty little feature on the save screen. You get to see all of your failures tallied up next to one little tombstone. The other thing that is an attractive feature to a lot of people but I find incredibly frustrating, not to the point of rage quitting, but just swearing at the TV a little, is fighting the bosses. So far in every game that I've played, there is a pattern or a structure to what you need to do in the battle. Trials of Mana, like a lot of RPGs, has the structure that most RPGs have. Light is weak to dark, wood is weak to fire. So for this specific Zelda game, either I can't figure out the pattern or there isn't one. 
While I understand that it is a trial and error, learn from your mistakes kind of game, I don't have the know-how or wherewithal to even know what I have to learn from. I think too much in the realm of logic rather than games. What I mean by this is, for example, the genie boss. He's in a bottle that you need to break to defeat the boss. Check. Okay. Got it. I pick the bottle up and simply throw it. I do this a lot, and I get nowhere. Nowhere in my brain do I think, okay, throw it at the wall. My logic tells me a wall or a floor, it doesn't matter, each one would cause a vase to break. So I needed to be told that I had to throw it at the wall. I would have been stuck there forever. Some of the bosses have very obvious places that you need to hit. And then there are others where I literally have to die eight times and win out of sheer luck. The only other thing about the game that initially I didn't like, but I've grown to enjoy is the constant backtracking. You make it through the village, then you go to the forest and survive only to get instructions to go back to the village. At first I was annoyed by this, but I learned the map and traveled back and forth constantly. It got much easier because I had learned not only where everything is, but I also acquired warp pads. One thing that caught me off guard and I love with the depth that is difficult to describe, the chickens. I would accidentally hit a chicken with my sword and Run would say, hey, be careful around those chickens. I didn't understand, so I thought, they're chickens, it's cool, what could they possibly do? That's when the chickens attacked. I laughed so much harder than I thought I would as these chickens multiplied and swooped down, basically pecking me to death. I had to learn. I had to learn the hard way. So when you play, be nice to the chickens. My overall first impression is positive. Even after I complain and yell at Ren and yell at the TV, I still seem to want to sit and play for longer. I have determination here, and it's a fun story. I have enjoyed how the storyline unfolds and develops. While there are things that make me frustrated or make me question why they would do it that way, I can clearly understand why so many people love Zelda. It has charm, adventure, danger, and fun all packed into it. I'm excited to continue my journey, not only with Link's Awakening, but also experience more of this wonderful series of games. Hey puppers, thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page for more memes, news, and sneak peeks into what's going on in Popcorn. Can't wait to see you. Toodles!